Hello, folks. It's time to look at some non-ideal DC characteristics of our op amp. In this video, we're going to look at DC offset. DC offset is an undesired small DC value that appears at the output of your amplifier. Now, if you have an AC, a straight up AC application, that's not a problem. You can always just throw in a coupling cap to get rid of any stray DC. But you might be doing, for example, a measurement at very low frequency, or DC for that matter, where a coupling cap is not practical. And the problem here is that you're going to get ambiguity in your output. Well, small DC offset. The problem is you don't know exactly how big it is. It's going to vary from op amp to op amp to op amp because it all has to do with the internal matching of the op amp, right? You know, that diff amp. You know, we talked about output offset errors and so forth with uh, discrete components in a diff amp. Well, that produces this V out or is a component of this V out, this, this DC offset. Let's say that your DC offset could be anywhere from negative 100 millivolts to positive 100 millivolts. Right? And again, you don't know exactly where it is for this particular op amp. You know, I could have two, three, 27 op amps. One of them is at minus 100, one of them is at plus 50, another one's at minus 25, a third one's at plus 79. You just don't know. So, that's the envelope. We know it's going to fall somewhere in that range. Now, I read, right, as an output voltage, like again, maybe this is coming from a sensor and I'm boosting up the signal. So I read a 500 millivolt signal at the output. Well, how much of that is actual signal and how much of it's offset? I mean, it could be 400 millivolts of signal and 100 millivolts of offset. But it could also be 600 millivolts of signal and a negative 100 millivolts of offset. And anything in between. It could be exactly 500 millivolts of signal and no offset could be 450 millivolts of signal and 50 millivolts of offset. You see what's going on. So the problem here is, look, I'm, if I was getting a measurement off of a sensor, like a temperature sensor, well, look at that huge change, 400 to 600. Ambiguity in the output, right? Uncertainty. I don't know what that is. So two things. I want to be able to calculate how bad this is. What is the DC offset? And secondly, what do I do to minimize it? Well, that second part kind of tells us a little bit about, well, you know, where does it come from, or it informs us on that. And it's not going to make any difference whether I'm, I'm looking at an inverting or a non-inverting voltage amplifier, because you kind of think of this like a, a superposition thing. You short out your source, and you see what you get, basically. Well, if we were to redraw this, you know, without my AC source, um, so this is my RI value, and then I have a feedback resistor over here. And then uh, we probably have, uh, you know, some, some kind of source impedance to deal with. Assuming this was uh, being driven from the plus input, I'll just call that RS. Um, there are DC currents, bias currents, flowing through these things. So if you, you know, actually got out a meter and measured, you set up something like this, you would see there's, yeah, there's, I'm going to draw them incoming. They might be outgoing if this was like a PNP, but whatever. So we've got these little currents flowing in here. Well, for starters, if we don't match the, the um, resistance on the plus input versus the minus input, even if these currents are identical, if the input bias currents are identical, which probably isn't going to be the case, but let's just assume it is. Um, if the resistors don't match, those voltage drops don't match, right? The IR drops across these things don't match. And that's going to produce a small error voltage on the input, which will get multiplied, and burp, we're going to see a V out uh, DC component. I don't like that. That's bad. 
Um, that's along with whatever DC offset we have in the op amp itself. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that the resistances are matched. In other words, I want to make sure that the resistance seen from the plus input to ground is the same as from the minus input to ground. All right. In other words, in a case like this, this RS, which I'm going to call this our offset, because you actually wouldn't need ordinarily that resistor if we had an inverting amplifier, because this would just go to ground and your input would be over here. So I'm just going to call it our offset. You want to set that equal to RI in parallel with RF. If this is an, uh, a non-inverting amplifier, uh, amp amplifier and you have your input over here, if the source impedance is smaller than RI in parallel F, then you're going to have to add a little bit of resistance in series. Now there's a downside to doing this. Adding resistance is going to increase noise. And you know we're going to look at that in an upcoming video when we look at noise. But as far as DC offset is concerned, this is what we want to set up. Now, the text goes through the general case where you have maybe a, a non-matched situation and it derives some equations. All I'm going to say is, if you really care about DC offset, you're going to do this. You want to do this. And if you do this, if this is true, if our offset is equal to Ri in parallel with Rf, then we have a nice simple equation for our output offset voltage. The out offset will equal the noise gain. Remember the noise gain? All right, A noise is 1 plus RF over I, whether or not it's inverting or non-inverting. It's going to be the noise gain times the input offset voltage of the op amp. VOS, which you can find on a data sheet. On some data sheets, VOS is also known as VIO. It depends on really the manufacturer. But anyway, you can look that up on a data sheet. I'll give you typical values and, and uh, max worst case. Plus um, this offset current, the IOS, IOS, also known as IIO times your feedback resistor RF. This is a good argument for keeping your feedback resistor small because this produces a DC offset. You know, you're kind of stuck with this. You know, you got a noise gain, off you go. But with this, you know, if I could make the feedback resistor smaller, I can reduce my offset, right? Okay, so let's do an example. Let's take a, an inverting amplifier over here, like so. I'm going to say this is a 200K, and the input resistor is 10K. Now, instead of returning this to ground, I'm going to put in a resistor. This is my R offset. Let's say I look up on my data sheet. For this particular device and the data sheet tells me that VOS is 5 millivolts and that's you know it's a worst case thing and IOS is uh, 0.1 microamps 100 nanoamps however you want to say that so my questions are basically uh, What's the value of our offset to minimize this offset? And secondly, how big is the offset? How bad is the offset? So the first part is fairly easily uh, completed. So that's just the RI in parallel with the RF. 10K in parallel with 200K. So that's about 9.5K. Okay, the V out offset, we'll just use this equation. What's my noise gain? Well, signal gain is a negative RF over RI. We're going to use this later. 
Um, that's 200k over 10k or 20. Noise gain plus RF over RI. So that's 200k over 10k plus one, which is 21, right? No inversion. Oop, forgot my minus sign over there. Um, throw that in here with your um, with your uh, VOS. So I've got 21 VOS is 5 millivolts. Now the IOS from the data sheet is 100 nano or 0.1 mics. And the RF we just pull off of here, 200K. All right, now I like to do these separately because I want to see which one is um, dominant. Right. You know which which is the the evil contribute uh, contribution so to speak. Who's the big one? So twenty one times the five millivolts is going to get us one hundred and five millivolts. And these in reality might actually cancel, but we're always looking for worst case, so we just add them together. Right, the K's and the micros are going to get us millis, so that's just um, twenty millivolts for that. And that gives us, remember, this gives us a magnitude, a range. So I like to say it's plus to minus, not either or, but a range of negative 125 millivolts up through positive 125 millivolts, right? That's the magnitude of the possible change. Now, one thing that you'll notice about this is because we're throwing in the gain. If you want to compare two amplifiers, and they don't have the same gain, the amplifier with the higher gain is always going to look worse. You know, um, even if the overall performance is identical. In other words, if they have the same VOS and the same RF and all that stuff. If you set it up for a higher gain, it's going to look a lot worse because you have the AN in here. So what we like to do, if I'm going to compare amplifier A to amplifier B, uh, we talk about input referred offset. Referred back to the input, right? Input referred offset. I have to abbreviate that so I can actually fit it in here. And what that is, is your V out offset divided by your signal gain, magnitude of your signal gain. Like in this case, it's negative 20, but um, you forget about the minus sign. So what we would do in this case is we'd say, well, it's 125 millivolts. The signal gain is 20. And I would just divide that out and I'd get a range of uh, six and a quarter millivolts. In other words, I just treat that as if it was a, a small DC input to my amplifier and it gets multiplied by the signal gain and off we go. So the amplifier that has the smaller input referred offset is going to be the, uh, is going to be the superior design, right? You can't just say, well, um, you know, I'll use two amplifiers like this, and then they'll both have small noise gains, and then I'll get a really small value. Because what's going to end up happening is whatever the DC offset is coming out of this amplifier, that's treated as an input to this one. So that gets multiplied by the gain, and it winds up out here. You're not going to, you're not going to have any improvement in performance. As a matter of fact, it'll probably be worse. But there you go. So what if you come up with a value over here that's insufficient? In other words, your um, your value is such that this ambiguity we were talking about is, is just too great. Well, you do have the option of, well, first of all, you have the option of spending more money and getting a much higher quality op amp. But one thing you can do is manually null the amplifier. Now, depending on the, on the package style that you have, the op amp may have a couple of extra pins on it labeled offset null. And they will give you instructions, and this will vary from op amp to op amp to op amp, you know, from design, design, design. So what you see for a 741 may not work on a 5532, which may not work on a 318, and so on and so forth. But typically, you'd have something like this. Here's your op amp. And there's a couple of pins, like I said, labeled offset and all. And they'll have you connect maybe um, 
a potentiometer, a couple of resistors, but you know, this would be typical. You'd have a pot maybe connected to resistor, and then this pin might go to the negative power supply or the positive power supply, or you know, it all depends on what the internal design is. But essentially what you do is you just tweak this pot because it's usually connected to the diff amp, and you're just balancing, unbalancing the diff amp bias currents so you can shift it one way or the other. So you just have a, a DMM at the output, for example, and you adjust this such that the output goes to zero with your inputs grounded, where with no input signal, you just look at that output and you tweak the pot and you bring it down to zero so it's manually nulled, right? You manually bring it down. Um, and high quality trim pots are not cheap. Uh, of course, you have to physically do this and over time, you know, it might uh, uh, shift you might get a um, you know mechanical movement in here, and um, it'd have to be you know recalibrated at some point in the future. Um, but this this is an option if you really really have to get this down to a minimum value, you know, to to uh, as little ambiguity in there as possible. Well, that is a possibility. Okay. Well, that's not everything because it turns out that um, offsets are also affected by temperature. And we're going to look at that in the next video.